Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Dick van Oeveren and in this fifth video of Aruba's dynamic segmentation series I will give you an overview of the dynamic segmentation architecture and terminology. If you haven't seen the first four videos and want to know everything about user roles, user based tunneling and port based tunneling, check out the playlist and enjoy watching the other videos. As said in this video I will give you an overview of the dynamic segmentation architecture. I will do this by showing you all the components in the architecture and then step by step I will walk through the process. Let me start with port based tunneling because this is the simplest architecture. With port based tunneling the switch knows how to reach the mobility controller. With port based tunneling you can configure a primary and a backup mobility controller. The tunnel is always established with the primary controller. In case the primary controller fails, there is a stateless failover to the backup controller. The tunnel is only established when the port is active. When there is no connected port, the tunnel for that port is down. Each port on the switch has its own tunnel to the mobility controller. When the tunnel is established, the security enforcement takes place at the mobility controller. And that's really it for port based tunneling. It's easy to set up, but it also has its limitations. For example, there is no load balancing and failover is stateless. And this is where you get all the good stuff when you deploy user based tunneling. Let's check out the uh, architecture for user based tunneling. With user based tunneling, the architecture becomes very different. There are a lot of components with user based tunneling that build the solution but really most of it is under the hood, so it's transparent for the operation. This is the architecture. You see a lot of acronyms and terminology here, so let me explain what this all means by doing a step-by-step -step walkthrough. Uh, you can see that I've also added multiple controllers that operate in a layer 2 cluster. So all controllers in this cluster are synchronized. The first step with user-based tunneling is to configure the switch for user-based tunneling. This mainly consists of configuring the primary and backup controller and setting the mode to role-based instead of port-based. Once you set the mode to role-based, the switch establishes a connection to the controllers. That initial connection is the control plane. Now here's what happens. The first step is that the switch sends a bootstrap message to the primary controller asking for establishing the control plane connection and for a list of cluster members. In this example the primary controller is a cluster member of a cluster with three other members. When the primary controller receives the bootstrap message it sends back a response to the switch providing that cluster information and acknowledging the connection request. In the response, the controller also sends a bucket map. The bucket map is a list of hashed entries that contain the mapping of user MAC addresses to controllers, the clustered controllers, that the users will be tunneled to. Now that the switch knows all the members in the cluster, it will establish a control plane connection to one of the controllers. This can be any controller in the cluster, it doesn't really matter. It also establishes a dormant secondary control plane to another cluster member. Again, this can be any controller in the cluster. Rest assured that when you have many switches in the network establishing control plane connections, this is all load balance, so you never get all the switches connected to a single controller in the cluster. The name of the controller with the active and primary control plane is called the switch anchor controller and the name of the backup control plane controller is the secondary switch anchor controller. Now when the switch anchor controller fails there is a state full failover to the secondary switch anchor controller. So mind you, it's stateful. This means that the client does not have to re-authenticate. The failover is transparent for the client. 
When one of the control planes fail, another controller in the cluster will assume the role of either a switch anchor controller or secondary switch anchor controller. Once the control plane and backup control plane are established, the devices can now connect to the network and establish the tunnels to the mobility controllers in the cluster. Let me show you how that works. A device connects to the network and authenticates successfully. ClearPass returns an accept message and the secondary user role is applied either through a local user role or a downloadable user role. The switch now knows that it has to establish a tunnel because the secondary user role is defined. It checks the bucket map and obtains a free entry from that map. That entry contains the IP address of one of the mobility controllers in the cluster. And the switch will also reserve an entry for the backup tunnel in case the active tunnel fails. Now that the switch has the entry, it will establish a data plane connection with that selected controller. Once that connection is established, it will also create a dormant entry to a backup controller. When the primary uh, data plane connection fails, there is a stateful failover to the backup controller. Again, this is stateful, so the device does not have to re-authenticate. It's transparent, similar to the control plane connections. There are always two data plane connections between the switch and controller cluster, unless there is only one controller left in the cluster, of course. The controller that has the primary data plane connection is called the user anchor controller and the backup data plane controller is called the secondary user anchor controller. And same as with the switch anchor controllers, the user anchor controllers are fully load balanced. This means that any controller in a cluster can be a switch anchor controller, a secondary switch anchor controller, a user anchor controller or a secondary user anchor controller. And this is what makes the dynamic segmentation architecture so robust and scalable. But it also makes the architecture very easy to deploy because all of this is happening under the hood. You don't have to configure any, anything here other than telling the switch it has to connect to a cluster. And for the mobility controllers, cre uh, creating a layer 2 cluster. There is actually a very good video series available on the ABC channel on how to set up your mobility architecture. So check out the link that you see in the video. Back to the architecture. Now, when the switch reserves an entry uh, in the bucket map, it sends an update to the primary controller. In this case, it is the uh, 192.168.0.156 so that the cluster knows about the reservation for that switch. It is important to know that each switch has its own bucket map so switches don't have to know about each other's bucket map. It's only relevant between the switch and the mobility cluster. Let me show you what happens when you connect a second device to the network. The control plane is already established, so nothing changes from that perspective. However, because of the load balancing functionality, the switch reserves another entry from the bucket map. This entry maps to different controllers, so the user anchor controller and secondary user anchor controller for this device will be different, as you can see in the animation. And this is really all you need to know about the concepts of dynamic segmentation. It is time to get the job done and show you all the different scenarios in action. But not in this video. Please be on the lookout for the next video where I will cover the port based tunneling configuration. And I end this video by saying thanks for watching, a thumbs up if you like the video and if you have any suggestions, ideas or questions please let us know. And subscribing to the ABC Network channel is free of charge and there is a lot of great content that's just for grabs. See you later and have a great day.